Hello and welcome to Monday Night Live. It's Yvonne. It's the 1st of August. Yeah, gosh, how did we get here? Horse's birthday globally. I'm not sure how or why um, that was determined. Perhaps someone knows that. Um, so if you're here and watching live, please drop me a note and let me know that you're here, that you're watching, um, wherever you might be in the world. And I know we have lots of people from all over the country. So please go ahead and say hi. Uh, let me know how, how you're going, whether you're warm, hot, cold, lots of that dreaded uh, <clears throat> spicy cough going around at the moment. So if you have it or have had it uh, recently, please take care. Let me know because um, it does affect uh, where w just how you're feeling and stuff like that. So 1st of August, uh, if I take into account what we're going to talk about tonight, a couple of things. Firstly, pause and effect. So if you are on our newsletter list, you would have... Um, just received the email, probably not had a chance to read it because I literally just pressed the button uh, to say go. Uh, I also want to talk about, well, the pause and the effect of the pause. Um, our Iceland slide night that we have coming up in a couple of weeks and just some things that uh, we have been discussing here at Women's Fitness Adventures as leaders and, you know, what is it about what we do that we are most proud of and, um you know, that we believe we are most successful at as well. So as I said, if you are watching live, and I know there's some eyeballs on the screen, remember I can't see you, you can see me, um, please let me know where you're watching from, uh, what your temperature's like, whereabouts in the world that you might be. I know last week we had someone drop by from Belgium and someone dropped by from the US, so that was really lovely as well. So for the last month, I'm finally back uh, in the office. It's taken me a while, but finally back in the office. And um, it feels good to be here. And um, hi, Patricia in Crescent Head. And hello, Trisha. Uh, yeah, Trish. Trisha's not here, but I'll say hello to her anyway, um, unless there's a different Trisha. Um, yeah. You've thrown me there. Um, yeah, so finally back after um, oh, Trisha is watching from Crescent Head. Hello, Trisha. Uh, she's, yeah, she confused me there, Patricia and Trisha. Um, Broadwin is read the newsletter, too cold to be outside in Launceston. I can imagine I saw those pictures of it snowing down in your state today. Uh, and lovely to have you here, Trisha, from Crescent Head as well, beautiful part of the world. Uh, Sandra, a little cool but a beautiful afternoon on the Central Coast. Hello, Anne, how are you? Anne Storman. Hello, Leanne from Brisbane as well. So it's so lovely to have all of you here. As I said, I am back in uh, the office, back home from my travels and lots and lots to share, lots of insights and uh, lots of, uh, you know, just things that have come up that I'd, I'd like to share with you. Um, Donna is hi from Brizzy. Ellen, back home in um, Talgano in Victoria, freezing here, cool evening and the fire is on. And hello, Cherie from Ningi. So in my travels, which have taken me far and wide, I have managed to avoid all of the nasty weather that's been happening in Australia. And I think over in Iceland, we were warmer than what we were here in Australia. And certainly um, a couple of weeks at the beach uh, didn't hurt anyone in the North Queensland and uh, the northern, well, Noosa region of um, Brisbane doesn't hurt anyone. Um, so what did I see? I took some time out over my holidays. So I, if you are a member, you'll know that I haven't been particularly active in the Facebook group, threw out a couple of newsletters for you to read, um, but I'm back now. So you'll start to see a little bit more of me. Um, but when I, um, I took, you know, obviously the group, we went to Iceland, had the most fabulous time. And then I took two weeks annual leave. And it was a great time for me to pause and for those of you who, who know me either online or have met me in person, I'm not particularly good at pausing. Um, I'm not sure what your thoughts are about yourself, but if you want to share whether you're good at pausing, taking time out, please let me know. But what I noticed when I paused is that I had time to look around and not just look around at me and my world and what I'd achieved and, and hadn't or um it also gave me a marker for, um, you know, what's happened in the world over the past 12 months. And so we take this particular holiday once a year uh, to the beach and it's pretty much the same week each year. And this time last year when we went, it was the Tokyo Olympics 
and it was a time when Brisbane or Southeast Queensland went into lockdown. So we actually stayed at our holiday a little bit longer last year because we were locked down. But I measured um, my year and I looked at the pause between this time last year and now and what's happened in the world and what's happened in my state and, and my suburb and in my life as well. And it's really when you take stock of that and you, you get to measure it by time, you take the pause and you look at it over time, that you realise that time moves really fast and that we don't get a second opportunity at a whole lot of things, which is probably why the world's gone a little bit crazy now for travel and, and for doing things, which is wonderful to see uh, because we didn't have that opportunity for a good couple of years. But if I look at, you know, this time last year to, to now, the Olympics were on last year and um, we're just having now the Commonwealth Games, which Australia is doing particularly well at, um, but what else has happened? We moved on very rapidly from a virus that stopped the world that we are to some extent, um, have I got one in here? Um, no, I haven't. Uh, being very cautious, uh, wearing masks for some of us and, and not. I, I will wear a mask when I'm out. I have too much fun coming up to let anyone else who has that spicy cough ruin my fun that's coming up. Um, but what else has happened over that 12 months? Have I you know, grown as a person? Have I read the books that I wanted to do? Have I achieved my health and fitness goals, my family goals, my personal goals? And and when I stop and, and pause and take a look around, what do I actually see? And I see my future out there. I see my future as I want it to be or as I don't want it to be, you know, holidaying in towns where everyone's on holidays and, and some people live there. Uh, you get to see a whole broad spectrum. Um, I, I did, when I paused, see a lot of angry people on my travels. And, you know, for me, the pause was a good opportunity to look at all those angry people and realise that the world and life is far too short to be angry. And if we're not um, happy about something or if we're not enjoying something, then we do have the opportunity to change it, to either step aside and go, hey, that's not something I want to be part of or I agree to or I need to make changes um, so I realized in my pause that you know there's no space for anger there's no space for judgment either um, I realized in my pause that I also you know being being mobile is really important to me and functionally mobile and you know when I see people on long-haul flights who struggle with mobility when I see um you know, people who are unable to or choose not to walk down the street um, but are perfectly able. I think that may work for them, but that's not the future that I want. So I all took all this into account when I took my pause. And the effect um, that that has on me is actually what do I do with it? What do I do with all of that stuff? I might have the best intentions um, or not. Uh, and whether I actually do something on it, which then cycles right back to that 12 months ago when I took the same pause, what do I want to do? Do I want to, um, you know, do A, B, C or D? And it doesn't really matter, um, you know, there were things when I looked back over the 12 months that I didn't do that I had intended to do or I decided that actually they weren't for me anyway. So when we were talking today, we were doing our, our Monday hiking in Brisbane, we were talking about how short life was and how um, that we can, you know, that wonderful saying from the movie Shawshank Redemption, if you've seen that, you can get busy living or you can get busy dying. And we all know with the time that um, we've spent in lockdowns and stuff that, you know, we don't get those years back. And so, it's too short to spend time, as I said, being angry or doing things that, you know, don't work for us. Let's find a solution. Let's make decisions that uh, move us toward uh, something that is more enjoyable or is more in our happy space or moves us away from where we don't want to be. So my pause and effect time um, got me to that. Now, let me just check in with who's here because I've got a great story from someone who did that exactly. Um, so hi, Patricia from Melbourne. Hello, Fiona from Brisbane. Haven't seen you in a little while. Hello, Alison in Melbourne and Meg in Melbourne. Hi, Marie in Noosa. Beautiful. That's where I was last week. Hope the sun's shining up there today. Um, hi, Kerry in Melbourne. All our Melbourne crew are out today. Hello, Gail as well. Lovely to have you here. Um, 
So a friend of mine, um, and hello, Margaret from Cairns. So lovely to see you a couple of weeks ago as well. Um, so a friend of mine's mother many, many years ago um, did the pause and effect. And she's in her 80s now, 80s. And when she was in her 50s, and I, I have written a newsletter on this a couple of years ago, she decided that she wanted to design her next 30 or 40 years. And so she did exactly that and now she is living the life that she chose. And she chose to set herself up with a wonderful, wonderful group of friends. She chose to uh, work to be financially independent. She chose to find a great community place to live. She chose to focus on her wellness way back in her 40s and 50s so that she now in her 80s is, you know, showing up all the, you know, 40, 50 year olds uh, in what she can and can't do. And it's all about designing the life that she wanted. And by taking that pause and looking around going, is this where I really want to be? Or is this something new that I want to try? Or, you know, it doesn't have to be a whole life redesign as this lady did, but it can be just, I want to, and my husband and I were doing to-do lists and he, he, wants to sing and I'm not a singer uh, but that was something on his list is I want to design a life that has some singing in it and mine is design a life that doesn't have any singing in it so other than functional fitness for those of you who show up that's about as good as it gets um, so it's you know it's just those little things that start to move us towards a place where we want to be and away from something that uh, is no longer serving us or no longer enjoyable or we're just not getting that satisfaction from it so uh, yes, it was a great time up there, Margaret, as well. So I'd be keen to know if anyone watching has ever done that pause and effect that, you know, it, you, you take stock of where you're at and go, okay, I'm really happy with where I'm at. I'm in a happy place. I'm, you know, as happy today as I was 10 years ago. Or, you know, I if I move these pieces on my own chessboard, then, you know, that's going to get me to the place where I really feel I need to be. And, um I was also listening today to a podcast and the podcast was all about, well, it wasn't about menopause, but there was a line in there where they were talking about menopause and it was a really great view on it because she said um, it's the pause. So as it was some podcast for women over 50 or 40, oh, I don't know, they seem to be merging all those 40s and 50s and 60s all in one Um in some ways they're making us all younger and in other ways I feel like they're making us all older. Um, but it was that this is a time to pause when there's changes happening uh, to our bodies, to our emotional state, to, you know, at the different life stages that we're at as well. It's an opportunity to pause and to pause and go, I like where this is going, I don't like where this is going, but to actually then just take a pause and have a look at the effect of if I move this piece, what will happen if I move that one? If I move all three of them together, uh, what will happen as well? And I thought that was a really great way of looking at it rather than oh, this thing that I have to endure and go through that's having all these changes on my body that I don't like, uh, you know, is that what um, I really have to accept? So I thought that was another great way of looking at the pause and effect. So if you have a story of pause and effect that you'd like to share uh, with me, that would be great. They also say in the business world that you need to um, sometimes pause. Uh, so sometimes to go, you need to go slow so you can go faster. And I know that some of the great creative breakthroughs I have, and for those of you who are members, don't worry, there's some coming, happen when you aren't really thinking about it, when you just bury it uh, somewhere deep in your subconscious and uh, just let it brew and and contemplate in there and then the great magic happens so let me just um, share Ellen's comments here this is so important Yvonne I've been away and for the first time I could get in and out of my kayak without falling in and getting wet oh Ellen that's so fabulous all thanks to functional fitness and hiking woohoo uh, this time last year when I joined women's fitness adventures I wanted to be able to get in and out of my kayak and stay dry wow, my legs are so much stronger. I paused. Then I thought I'm going to be able to do this. Now I can. 
What a beautiful, beautiful story, Ellen. And it is exactly that. It's about taking stock of where you're at and, and what you want to be. And they don't have to be, you know, a big goals like that, but they need to be something where you think this is, this is what I want and then purposely um, move towards it. And, you know, I love that bit about your legs being so much stronger, um, you know, because sometimes, especially as women, we don't think about, well, we tend to underestimate our strength. We tend to underestimate our abilities and if we've put in the work, uh, then we will get the results. And while we're talking on this, Ellen, one of the other podcasts, because I did a lot of walking on my beach holiday, um, was about, um, it was an interview with Glenn Robbins. I think it was on The Imperfects or something like that. And he was saying that he has this anxiety disorder and um, he he dropped he, he stopped doing a um something in grade six it was a dance that he was in charge of and he pulled out of the dance at the last minute and he disappointed so many people and he knew um along afterwards that it was um just anxiety uh and he then talked with Shane Warne many years ago many years after um and Shane said to him if you've put in the work and you know, it's been successful before, then all it is is nerves and fear. But if it's been successful before, there's no reason why it won't be successful again. And Ellen, you know, it, it comes back to that, that, you know, you've done the hard work, you've been successful in the strength building and the hiking and, you know, all those other skills that you have and your legs are so much stronger and taking that pause and going, I've done the hard work. I know this is going to work. It's a little bit of fear because maybe it's new, maybe it's different. Um, and then you get that beautiful result. And, you know, if you want to listen to that podcast, it's it's on the imperfects. But it is um, all about just knowing that you've put in the work, knowing that you get the results uh, and that there may be a little bit of fear going along with it. But I just love that story. So thank you for sharing. Um, Debbie Smith, of course, I have to keep singing. I will always sing on an adventure, especially with you. Um, and Debbie made us a beautiful song from our Iceland adventure. So if you're coming to our slide night, we may share a little sneak peek of that. Um, and Simone, having just returned from surgery, woohoo! I'm so glad that that went ahead with all the changes that are happening here at the moment uh, with, with the health system and the overload. I'm so glad that you've had the surgery. Let the healing begin. You can join the Broken Wrist Club uh, and get going from there. Uh, so I do think for everyone, the pause and the effect, you know, it doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be momentous. It can be, you know, that I think meditation is part of um, the pause and effect as well, where we just spend time uh, reflecting and contemplating and working out what's really working and what's not working for us as well. Getting back to uh, this, this, um, thing of putting in the effort and getting the results many years ago right when I was starting women's fitness adventures I used to swim in the pool and I'm not a I, I can swim but I wouldn't say I'm a strong swimmer I you know don't really like where I can't see the bottom and um, it was a swim fit class and you were allowed to wear flippers and you'd swim and I started off in the stroke correction lane and then I got moved up to the faster lane and it was at, you know, 9.30 in the morning. So it wasn't a competitive thing. And I could never really do 50 metres quickly. I still can't do it quickly, but quickly without flippers. And so I always defaulted to flippers. And when I was on my beach holiday last week, I my husband loves swimming. So I went to the 50 metre pool with him. I had to buy the goggles and the hat and some bathers. I didn't have any or togs or costume, wherever you're from. And um I got in and I swam 50 metres freestyle without flippers. And just like you, Ellen, I got to the end. Sure, it's nowhere near a Commonwealth Games time. <laughs> I think they can do, you know, 400 metres in, in my 50 metre time. But I actually felt that my legs were so much stronger than they were eight years ago. And so I ended up doing about 10 laps, which for me was amazing without flippers. And I realised that it's that as I say often, that compounding fitness, that ability that we do something regularly enough that the fitness catches up 
with us and that strength in our legs. I am so much stronger now than what I was eight years ago. And I thought I was pretty strong eight years ago. But it's, as you say, um, Ellen, it's that the functional fitness, it's the hiking, it's the deliberate, um, you know, looking around, what do I see? Where do I want to be? Um, that means you, you wear, there's a saying in surfing, not that I'm a surfer, but we did a learn to surf, um, is where you look is where you go. And it's the same when you ride a mountain bike and you look over the edge of the bridge and you ride off the bridge, where you look is where you go. And I think in our life as well, where we look is where we go. So if we want to look for anger or we want to look for imperfection or we want to look for judgment or where things fall short, we'll certainly find it. And if we want to look for um, fun and success and maybe adventure, then where you look is where you'll find it. And it's the same with the group of friends. If you want to find those friends that sing Debbie Smith uh, on adventure and laugh and are jovial and, you know, are prepared to do things that, you know, you find are enjoyable, then where you look is where you find them. So um, the pause and effect just teaches you so much and um, I think it's something that, you know, going forward will be uh, something that I incorporate regularly into my life, um, not just save it for my annual holiday. Um, so the two other things that I want to talk about, one is that we have an, our Iceland slide night coming up um, on August the 17th. And uh, if it's ever interested you, if you've ever wondered, it is now my number one place in the world, um, other than home, of course, uh, then I really encourage you to come along to our slide, slide night. It's open for members and non-members, just simply book in. Um, some of our members who were on the adventure will be coming on to talk with us as well. Um, but we'll show you some of the inside stuff, how, how the planning and the training went for that as well. Uh, and we may have a sneak peek about a possible 2023 Iceland adventure. Now, don't get too excited if you've done the one we just did because it is the same one that we're doing. Uh, and if you did do our one this year, then the year after, we'll go to those other areas that we were talking about. Uh, so if you've ever thought about Iceland or wished, uh, then, you know, just come along and listen and you'll hear that you know, how putting that one foot in front of the other with plenty of time, uh, if that's your thing, gives you the opportunity to do that. Um, and finally, we were talking today, pause and effect, you know, we're, we're over eight years old now, two years of those, or two and a half being in a pandemic, which is pretty challenging, um, about what makes us so unique as an organisation. And I was talking to a few different people in different environments today and, you um, them just reflecting on women's fitness adventures and we've had quite a few adventures all bumped up and quite a few more in the next couple of weeks so we've probably delivered about one two three four five six adventures in you know maybe nine weeks which is pretty intense and a lot of that is our catching up over the past couple of years but um you know what makes it so unique is that when things happen our leader is there our leader will take control our leader will uh, facilitate. She'll make sure that everyone who was on that adventure uh, is having a great time, is looked after, knows what to put in their pack, you know, whether the pack fits or not. You know, if there's any tricky sections, the leader is literally all over it. It's like having, you know, your own guide in your back pocket, additional to any guides that might be there as well. And it's really the the ins and outs so that you don't have to think, you don't have to be responsible for anyone or anything other than yourself and putting one foot in front of the other. Um, and, you know, that's pretty rare and pretty special because for eight years we've perfected this. We've, um, you know, we can almost, almost sense what the collective feeling is uh, without asking uh, and anticipate a whole lot of things before they even happen so they don't happen. Um, but if you measure success um, of an organisation and if you measure it in the way that we have taught and trained and taken thousands of women on adventures all around the world and locally as well and taught and trained women to become stronger and fitter in everyday life, whether you go on an adventure or not and strong legs are part of it, 
if you measure that as a success, then we are beyond successful because we know the impact that being involved has on a woman's not only physical and emotional fitness, but also confidence, self-esteem, friendships, uh, outlook on life, and that ripple effect is enormous. And I was chatting to a relatively new member this morning and she said, it's my time. It's my time to devote to me. It's my time to branch out and meet some new friends or make some new friends. It's my time to uh, really just step into who I want to be for the next you know, segment of my life. So, um, you know, that again is pause and effect in a different way uh, coming from someone externally uh, to internal. So lots and lots of um, takeaways from a simple beach holiday uh, that I'm hoping will, um, you know, you can take into your life. And if you are already doing the pause and effect, uh, as I said in the newsletter, please hit reply and let me know uh, because we all have something to learn from each other. So that's about it from me tonight. There is book club tomorrow night. I am really enjoying the book. Lots to talk about. Uh, not what I expected um, at all, but uh, really good uh, Dancing with the Machine, I think it's called, um, by Joe Morgan. Uh, so book club tomorrow night at seven. I look forward to sharing that book uh, with some of you who are, who are logged in. And if you are wanting to come, then just jump onto the website. It's the first uh, session tomorrow night. Um, we also have uh, next week our, you're loving the book, yep, next week our masterclass, um, the common hiking injuries and how we can avoid them. So I really encourage you to join into that one as well. I dropped a new functional fitness video into the website today for members all about arms uh, and then I've got a different one coming up. It's a short, sharp 15-minute one, that one. So you can do it twice if you want to uh, with, with hand weights. Uh, and then I've got a different one that will drop next week for you. So, uh, you know, if you haven't done them, there's 37 of them in there now. And if you have done them, then you can just cycle through because I'll, I'll have several uh, more coming over the next couple of weeks. So that's it from me tonight. Um, thank you for uh, joining in. If you've got any questions or any extra comments, then, you know, please just drop them in there. I look forward to catching up with you next week, this time next week. Um, two things. Next week is a birthday week for me. No, no significant number, although they're all significant. And in two weeks' time, my youngest, my 20-year-old leaves for America for six months. So another chapter um, unfolding in my life. So, you know, for those of you that have gone through, well, everyone goes through a birthday, but have gone through your youngest leaving the, the roost for a couple of weeks, love to hear your insight on that as well. So thanks for joining me. Uh, if you aren't a member, then you can... Um, just jump on here and where is it? You can join members, member, join members, join us as a member. Membership is open. If you are already a member and have a friend who wishes to join, don't forget there is our member rewards program uh, where you get adventure dollars for every friend who uh, joins as a member. So thank you so much for uh, joining me tonight and I look forward to catching up with you soon. Thanks, everyone. Bye.